Can Dish Network put SpaceX Starlink out of business? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Fireside. You know, I always love that lap song. Just that smokiness, guys. That smokiness. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. We're going to be talking about Starlink. I've been doing a lot about Starlink lately, a lot about, a lot, a lot of coverage, a lot of Starlink. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> you know that thing. Anyways, guys, today is a Starlink day, and the question is, can Dish Network put SpaceX Starlink out of business? And by the looks of it, it can, but there's a lot behind the scenes going on. There's a lot of moving parts, and I want to get into some of those parts and break it down for you, as I always do. It's not always about the how, but more of the why. And I like to explain the why a little bit and dig a little bit deeper than we see on a lot of other channels. So hopefully you appreciate that. And if you do, please consider contributing to the channel. You can click the little button down here that says thanks. You can do that. Or just simply become a member of the channel down here also. And if you find this content at all useful, please consider sharing it with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever. Share it. Let's try to grow this channel as quick as possible. We're getting there. We're up about 40, 43,000, somewhere around there. But we want to see 100,000, 200,000, half a million, a lot. Let's see if we can get there. Also, if you enjoy the content, please throw it a thumbs up. That will be helpful. And click this little bell icon over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. So let's get right into this. Now, the whole idea of Dish Network canceling, let's say, SpaceX Starlink is definitely a thing. And this has been going on for a while. There's been a lot of tugging and pulling and whatnot when it comes to FCC filings. And that's what I want to get into. What Starlink is saying or what SpaceX is saying is that Dish Network is looking to use the 12 gigahertz radio spectrum, that specific band. And SpaceX is currently using that for Starlink. And what SpaceX is saying is if Dish Network starts using that band, also there's going to be collision, let's say. There will be a degrading of the Starlink service and their customers are going to no longer have service. So they get into it on Tuesday and they've been going back and forth. I think it was last Tuesday when it was quoted from Starlink or from SpaceX and saying, if Dish's lobbying efforts succeed, our studies show that Starlink customers will experience harmful interference more than 77% of the time and total outage of service 74% of the time. Now, this is regarding to obviously Starlink's stability if this does go through. Now, what I did is I looked up some of the filings that went through and the latest filing, I believe it was like June 21st, where SpaceX writes into the FCC, puts this filing in there and states a whole bunch of facts according to them, of course. Upon even a cursory review of dishes and RS access supposed studies, in quote, relating to how much harm a new high-powered mobile service would do to next-generation satellite broadband service in the 12 gigahertz band, it is clear that no reasonable engineer could believe that they represent an honest interference analysis. SpaceX now confirms this conclusion with its analysis that corrects some of the most egregious assumptions in those, quote, studies and finds that people who depend on SpaceX would experience harmful interference in the 12 gigahertz band more than 77% of the time and be subject to total outage of service 74% of the time, rendering the band effectively unusable for satellite service for most Americans. As such, SpaceX urges the commission to investigate whether DISH and RS Access filed intentionally misleading reports. These reports simply cannot be squared with DISH's own correct representation in December 2019 that, quote, concurrent sharing of spectrum between co-primary 
5G and NGSO FSS operation is not viable in the 12 gigahertz band. This is what they stated themselves. These studies seem designed only to deceive the commission into improperly granting them and other multi-channel video and data distribution services licensees new spectrum rights, even knowing that such grants would harm Americans who depend on next generation satellite broadband for work, school, medical services, and other critical needs. And they pull up this nice little diagram of where they're showing this outage would happen, where we have complete outage or we have just simple interference. The footnote says a cumulative distribution function of interference to noise ratio into SpaceX user terminals operating in the 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz band for hypothetical mobile systems in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, once again, this is hypothetical and this happens all the damn time. You guys know it as well as I do. Companies like Dish Network and RSA, they're part of this 5G gigahertz coalition, just in case you didn't know. But what these coalitions do is they fudge the truth. All companies do this in one way or another. Matter of fact, this 5G for 12 gigahertz coalition, they put out their own report and their researchers said basically 12 gigahertz wouldn't have a problem with coexistence of multiple carriers on it. And this coalition, which of course Dish Network is a part of, their researcher is quoted in saying that, quote, this analysis demonstrates that 5G service can operate in the 12 gigahertz band, bringing enormous benefit to hundreds of millions of Americans with zero harmful interference on more than 99% of future NGSO or non-geostationary satellite orbit users. So what they're saying is, listen, hey, we're not going to have a problem with this coexistence. And SpaceX is saying that is 100% not the fact. Now, like I was saying, Researchers are there to fudge the truth. They can make data either positive or they can make it negative. And we all know that all researchers have some type of proclivity towards a specific result or maybe a paid for result, right? So there is a bias that goes on with all research. That's why you have to take it always with a grain of salt, no matter what research you read, and from who. You gotta think about who this researcher is or this research firm is, and who are they representing? Is it a non-biased representation? Most likely, like I said, there is no non-biased research, in my personal opinion. There's always that proclivity to a specific result. That's my slant on research. What yours is, maybe in the comment area below, let me know. Now, bear in mind, Dish Network has been lobbying the FCC for access to the 12 gigahertz band so they can run a 5G cellular network on the ground. Now, they've been doing this for a while, and I think to myself, I'm like, why would Dish Network want to have a 5G broadcast? Are they possibly trying to move out of satellite broadcasting and move into 5G instead? That could be the case. Before I go any further, I want to say that if you want more Starlink coverage like this, I've put together a Starlink playlist. Go over to my channel and then go to playlist and select Starlink. There's probably about 50 plus videos about helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, commentary, all kinds of Starlink information. Go check it out. Now, I'm certain that they feel the pain that Starlink has been providing them. There has been a lot of people that have moved away from satellite service and moved into IPTV. I'm one of them, right? I had Dish Network for over 20 years and I decided to dump them once I got Starlink. Why is that? Because then I brought in an IPTV network, which was for me, YouTube TV, and I'm able to watch hundreds and hundreds of channels. I can watch everything, Netflix, I can watch every channel that you can think of. And if there isn't something that is already on that service, I can purchase it for a few dollars extra per month. So it is much cheaper. Actually, my cost is about half 
the cost of what I used to pay with Dish Network. Now, once again, SpaceX and Dish Network and RS Access and all of these companies have been battling with the FCC with filing after filing after filing, like one of the filings that I just read. So in the end, the FCC will be making the final decision. Now, does it go with Elon Musk and SpaceX Starlink or does it not? If it does not, Starlink could really possibly cease to exist. If that band of 12.2 through 12.7 is compromised, we're going to see a lot of interference according to what Elon Musk is saying and his representatives are saying and put our service as Starlink users into jeopardy. And if that's the case, we will not be able to use the service. He would have to come up with a plan B. Now, Elon Musk is a smart guy. There probably is a plan B and a plan C too, but still, this is a major, major issue. The other thing that I want to bring to your attention is obviously as a Starlink customer, I don't want to see this happen. But the problem as I see it is that Elon Musk is one of those guys that are not one to mince words, so to speak, and becomes very confrontational at times, especially in Twitter, as other people we know do. And that could possibly bite him in the ass. The reason being, he said a lot of negative things about the FCC and the FCC looks down upon him in so doing. So does that affect them making their final decision? It possibly could. You know, today we live in a world where we cannot say what's on our mind. We do not have freedom of speech any longer. In my personal opinion, I think that freedom of speech has been gone for years. I mean, just using YouTube for an example, if I was to say certain words on this video, the video will get flagged, demonetized, or who knows what, all right? That's just the way it is. It's constantly churning and looking at content, either visual content or verbal content and transcribing the verbal content into written content and then writing algorithms on that written content to figure out if you're saying anything that it doesn't like. And if it doesn't like it, once again, you get flagged. The same thing holds true with Facebook and a lot of social media platforms. Freedom of speech is an illusion, guys. It's a matrix. It's not real. What it once was is really not what it is today. But not to go down that rabbit hole in my personal opinion, I think that Elon Musk is going to have to become a little bit nicer to the FCC. And what has happened recently is kind of that. Um, originally, Elon was saying that our Starlink is going to be a gigabit service and it's going to supersede fiber and 5G and any type of fat cable or whatnot. And now he's kind of inferring that Starlink will not supersede a terrestrial internet connectivity service, an ISP, but it will now, in his words, complement 5G and fiber. And I think that's very fascinating. He does not throw fat cable into that, right? Copper. Um, but by saying that, I think that it takes the heat off the fire a little bit. And hopefully in his mind's eye, says that let's not fight as much. I'm not going to take over your service, even though I can, but I'm not going to do it as of right now. We're going to all play together. Our service, the Starlink service, is going to be complementary to your 5G and fiber. So we'll see how that works. Like I said, I really don't know. I want to know your thoughts. Are you a Starlink user? Are you going to be a Starlink user? Do you want to get Starlink? Is it something that you are interested in? In the comment area below this video, let's have this discussion. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think? What do you think? Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Like always, throw it a thumbs up if you did. Also, subscribe and click this little bell icon over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, I might be going live very soon, probably this week talking about Starlink. You guys have been asking me for it. I was going to do it the other weekend, but Father's Day rolled in and then I couldn't do it. So anyways, we might end up doing that. So don't forget, subscribe to the channel so you will be notified when I do go live. And we can have these discussions about Starlink or tech or photo or video or whatever you would like to do. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com where you can find all the photography tools that I invented for you 
and me over the years, and hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. And don't forget, if you want more Starlink coverage, go over to my Starlink playlist. I have helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, all kinds of good Starlink information that I'm sure you'll find valuable. Once again, go to the channel and then go to playlists and select Starlink. You'll be able to watch probably like 50 plus videos I've done so far on Starlink alone. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for the end of the vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.